and we've been making great progress learning JavaScript. But today, we're going to learn how to work with conditionals. We're going to learn how to get our code to make decisions. And that is what coding is all about. You write a set of rules that can be applied over and over again to allow your program to function and allow users to get you know feedback and things like that. You know, um, example, bank, okay, credit card. You go into the store, right? And uh, you swipe your card. It's declined. Why? Because uh, you don't have enough money for the purchase, okay? And what happened? Well, behind the scenes somewhere uh, on your bank website, Chase or Wells Fargo, whatever you bank with, okay? There was a piece of code written that said, if incoming transaction dot amount, okay, is less than or equal to current account balance, then process transaction. Otherwise, say declined and make you look like an idiot in the store and you're embarrassed. So that has never happened to me before ever. Uh, so let's do that. Let's, uh, let's learn about uh, conditionals and getting our code to uh, make, make smart decisions. So we've talked about the use case. How do we actually do it? Well, you use the if statement, okay? If one is equal to one, console.log, we should see this. Okay, now of course that's silly. Of course one is equal to one, and you probably would never write code like this. Uh, but let's see if it actually works. So let's go to our page here. We should see this. We definitely saw that. So what happened here? Let's talk about it. If, so this is a keyword. Don't use the word if, it's a reserved keyword. And uh, these uh, things that you're gonna learning, the ifs and the elses here, uh, they actually apply to all programming language programming languages for the most part here, so that's pretty good. So we say if, and then we have the conditional statement here, okay? Uh, you surround it in parentheses. So basically we're saying if this turns out to be true, then let's go into these curly braces here and execute whatever's inside of it, okay? So if one equals one, const.log, we should see this. Well, what if we said one equals two? Let's refresh our page, and it's gone. It, it turned out to be false, okay? True or false. And so that is how you start working with Booleans. If one equals two, one equals one, and you can make decisions based on that. But that's kind of silly, right? Okay, let's uh, do a more realistic example. So var my account balance is equal to, let's say $300, okay? And let's say var, um, you know, Let's say Nikes. Nikes are cool. Uh, you know, the new skateboarding Nikes, the SB. I got a whole bunch of them. They're just amazing. So Nike SB shoes. If you've never seen them, go look at them. They're really good looking shoes. Okay, Nike SB shoes, you know, they're probably $79.23. Okay. So, all right. If Nike SB shoes, all right, is less than or equal to, okay, we're doing uh, a less than or equal to sign, not the double equals this time. Okay, the double equals mean it's the same, is it equal to. So if Nike SB shoes is less than or equal to my account balance, okay, then we just bought some dope shoes, okay? And uh, we should probably uh, change the account balance as well too would be good programmers and uh, do some arithmetic here. So we're going to say my account balance minus equals Nike SB shoes. Okay, that's the first time we've talked about that as well too, the, the, the minus equals uh, operator here. And what's happening is we're saying, okay, take these Nike shoes, which are $79.23, take, so my account balance is equal to my account balance minus Nike SB shoes. So it's saying take 300, subtract, 79.23 and then put it back into my account balance. This could also have been written as, we could have said my account balance equals my account balance minus Nike SB shoes. That's more readable, right? That makes more sense. But this is shorter uh, and uh, you know, see how there's the minus here and the equals here? Uh, we just put the minus in the front and the equals there and it's uh, shorter, okay? Cool, and then we can actually uh, print up the new account balance, console.log account balance plus my account balance, okay? You know, we're writing real code here. This, we don't have to do anything crazy to write realistic code, and there's code just like this in many professional applications, so. 
it's really easy to get discouraged and to think, oh, I'm, I'm a new person. I, you know, this is probably all dumb stuff you're teaching me. But no, I'm teaching you real stuff that I use all the time and many other programmers in their professional industry. So it's really good stuff. So let's go ahead and refresh the page. We just bought some dope shoes. Yay, account balance is now $220.76. That sounds about right. So what happened here? We used an if statement. So if the Nike shoes, all right, are less than or equal to my account balance, we subtract the uh, shoes from the balance and put it back in the balance, and then we print up the log with the new account balance. Now, what if these were like exclusive, like shoes, there's only like three pairs made, and so they're charging $799, or even even worse, a new shoe came out, and all those loser people, you know who you are, set up your little bots, so you can buy out all the shoes, and then you go and sell them on eBay for like twice the price, you know, like Nintendo Switch. I'm still unhappy about that. Anyway, um, let's see what happens now when the price is higher. We'll say else. It's the first time you're seeing that. Else, log, you two broke faux shoes, bra. Okay. Hey, they said I had to teach you pr proper programming principles. They didn't say I had to teach you proper English. All right. Refresh the page. You two broke faux shoes, bra. Okay. Um, right. Is our code working? Sure. Uh, the shoes are $799, so if $799 is less than or equal to $300, that's false. It's not. So it skips everything that's in here. Boop. All right. And then it goes into the else statement here. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I like it. Now, we're not quite done yet, though. I just happened to get a cool coupon in the mail from Nike. So var, um, let's say coupon. And we're going to say the coupon is uh, $400 off. <laughs> so $400 off, okay? So what we're going to do is let's say that uh, it runs this first. That we're in a weird store. We run the transaction first. And if it can't run through and the person's about to look like an idiot, then they're like, well, let me see if there's any active promotions, any coupons, okay? That's, that's more realistic here. So we're going to say else if. So this is different. This is an elf, else plus an if. So... Else if, and then what we can do is we can say if Nike SB shoes minus coupon, okay, is less than or equal to my account balance, then we'll go into here and we'll say, we'll copy this, we'll say we just bought some dope shoes with a coupon, and then we can uh, adjust the price accordingly. So my account balance minus equals Nike SB shoes minus coupon. Okay. And then let's console.log. Um, we'll just copy this here, actually. Console.log my account balance. Okay. So we have a coupon this time. All right. So we know that this is going to fail because we don't have enough money. So let's see if it actually goes into the second condition, else if. All right. I've saved it. Let's run it. Um, did I, maybe I didn't save it. Let's try that. My logic is flawed. Uh, else of Nike SB shoes minus coupon. So $799 minus 400. Hold on. That's probably still too high, huh? $799.23 minus 400. You guys were like, it's still not enough. Uh, the coupon is for $500. There we go. Let's try that again. Okay, we just bought some dope shoes with a coupon account balance. Okay, so we still drained our account, but you know we got a little bit of money left, like 76 cents. Not too bad. We still got our dope shoes. Um, so what happened here? We did not have enough money here. So it goes to the next else if. So if, else if, there's a coupon, okay, then do this. Else, okay, else is the fail save. This is what's gonna go into when everything else fails. And you can have as many else if statements as you want. You know, we could have said else if, and done it again, you know, else if, okay. But we don't need that many. I'm just letting you know you can do as many as you want. Uh, so again, if this is true, do this. Else, if this is true, do this. Else, as a last resort, go into here, okay? And that's it, really. I mean, you can really start working with uh, with account balances, uh, anything you could think of with uh, operations. And so we've talked about the double equal sign, right? So we talked about the double equal sign. Okay, that's equal to, okay? We've done the less than or equal to. 
All right, you know, so less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, so greater than or equal to. That's pretty cool, huh? Hmm? Equal to, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Now, in JavaScript, you're also going to see something else. Okay? You're going to see a triple equals. Say, what? What's a triple equals? Well, that's a really good question. Okay? So let's comment out this code here for right now. And you're going to see it a lot because that's the preferred way of, of working with um, comparison operators. So these are comparison operators. And uh, this is checking. this is checking to see if the value is the same. And this is checking to see if the value and the type is the same. And that may not make sense right now, but I will show you why it does make sense. So if I was to say, let's say um, var uh, age equals 23 and var Joe's age equals 23. So let's say this number was in our program already, but this number came from a user and it's a, it's a string. So we got a number and a string, okay? So this is really interesting. So if age, the double equal sign, is equal to Joe's age, okay, and we can console.log, I'm the same age as Joe, okay? Let's give it a shot, Let's see what happens. I'm the same age as Joe, what just happened here? What? So what it did was it actually took the value of this uh, Joe's age here and kind of converted it to a number and then it compared it. And this is actually really bad. Uh, the reason why it's bad is because we have inconsistent data here and this can cause problems later on, um, figuring out what's of what data type, do I need to convert it? Uh, you can run into a lot of problems here. So you never, ever, 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 ever want to use the double equal sign because it's not safe enough. We want to know if it's the, um, I mean, and in this case, you, maybe you could get away with it, you know, because it's an age and Joe's age, and you can look at it and be like, well, it's okay. Um, but in reality, you always want to check to make sure that the, the values are, really are the same. And so in this case, you know, maybe like number one, right? And number two, okay. Uh, or even, you know, let's make it even more generic. Val one. We don't even know what it is really completely. Okay, val2. And this will happen where, where you, you're not sure what's coming in and you need to check it. So we say val1 is equal to, triple equals to val2. All right. So these are the same. Else, console.log, one of these is not like the other. Okay, let's see what happens. One of these is not like the other. Okay, so this is interesting. Even though they have the same value, the triple equals is also checking for type, whereas this isn't a number, okay, a floating point number. This is a string, and they're not the same. And this is what you want to use all the time, okay? And if, if you're not convinced or you want more information, just go into Google and type in JavaScript when to use double equals, type in the two equals, and when to use the triple equals, and you'll find some great write-ups uh, on it. Um, but uh, what I'm telling you is always use this all the time. There's hardly any use cases when you sh should use the double equals, okay? Why did I show you that first? Because this is a progression, so now you know, all right? These are not the same, and they are not. So what have we talked about so far? We've talked about ifs, we've talked about else's, we've talked about else ifs, okay? I think one more thing that I wanna show you here is that when you have one line of code in an else or an if and else statement, you actually don't need the curly braces. Okay? So, if you have one line of code, you don't need the curly braces. Okay? It still works, right? Uh, if you have two lines of code, then it's going to break. You have to put the curly braces in, but this is this this is very common. I recommend that you do use the curly braces because many other programming languages require it. Uh, you don't have to, but I, I highly recommend it so your code is consistent and you don't have to keep thinking, oh, in JavaScript, I got to do this, and in Swift, I got to do that. You're always going to be much safer, and your code's going to be much cleaner, uh, in my opinion, if you just use the curly braces, okay? And so I'm going to just put these back in here the way they were. So again, rule of thumb, if it's one line of code, you don't need them um, after an else or if. If it's two lines of code or more, two or more, you got to have them, okay? So... Comparisons. This is really cool. I like it. 
I think we'll split this up. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk about logical operators. So these are comparison operators, but we also need to talk about uh, the logical operators um, that'll help us make even more decisions. So this is kind of like a two-part series, and you just finished the first one, and you're going to be watching the sequel. Woo, sequels are always better. It'll be better. All right, that's it. Mark Price at devslopes.com. See you soon.